Light bright, light bright, on today's episode of Playing With Fear. Welcome to Joe Blow Horror Videos Playing With Fear, where we take a look at some of the landmark horror titles throughout the history of gaming. This episode's going to be a little different. We're going to be looking at a bunch of games from the same license, as by themselves, there really isn't enough to justify a whole episode. Also, in the spirit of the holidays, we'll be looking at the games based off the Gremlins franchise, one of the most beloved Christmas horror titles we have. Yes, it's a Christmas movie. And you know what? So is Die Hard. Can't wait for the comments! Directed by Joe Dante, who I love, but never wrote his own films, Gremlins is actually the brainchild of Chris Columbus, who got the idea from a group of mice in his loft who sounded like they were chatting and plotting against him. He's not crazy, I promise. The idea was turned into a spec script and was later bought by Steven Spielberg, who said it was, quote, the most original thing I've seen in years. He dabbed Joe Dante to direct, hoping for the same horror comedy style he brought to The Howling, and brought it to Warner Brothers with the idea of co-producing it with his own Amblin Entertainment. The original script was apparently much darker and bloodier than what we finally got, and personally, I think it's better off as is. I don't think it would have had the same legs it does if it was an overly violent send-up of 50s creature features. The final product was still a bit spicy, however, and combined with the second Indiana Jones installment helped create the PG-13 rating. The movie was a smash success, winning both critically and commercially, and has gone on to be a favorite of genre lovers, particularly around Christmas. With its huge profit and a fan love you'd think a sequel would quickly follow, but it took another six years to come to fruition. Gremlins 2 The New Batch was released in June of 1990 and was a critical and financial bomb. While it made 11 million more than its budget, it paled in comparison to the original's profit margin and didn't come close to recapturing the fan love or critical reception of its predecessor. Personally, I love it, for the parody of the original and movie sequels in general that it turned out to be. It also has a lot more fun with its actors and budget than the first one did, almost becoming something straight out of an old Looney Tunes cartoon that Dante loved so much growing up. We also have the first movie to thank for copycat franchises like Critters, Ghoulies, Hobgoblins, and Munchies. After the lackluster showing of Gremlins 2 The New Batch, the franchise would fall into a bit of obscurity, with only pop culture references making their way into TV and film. A Gremlins TV series is in the works at HBO Max currently, and Gremlins 3 has been in development hell for some time. Merchandising, however, is a different story. The franchise has produced books, comics, toys, stuffed animals, and of course... We start our Gremlins video game journey at the release of the first film in 1984. If a thing existed, it was made into some sort of home computer gaming experience, and Gremlins was no different. First up is Gremlins for the Atari 2600, developed and published by Atari as a direct tie-in to the film. It is a two-screen game with a handful of difficulty levels that change a couple of things. The first screen sees the player take control of Billy attempting to catch mogwais that are jumping off his roof. Sure. If they land, they will immediately eat a cheeseburger and go into a pupil state egg that we all know will become a titular gremlin. The difficulty level changes the speed of the mogwais descent off the roof. The second screen, which is triggered after several sets of mogwais make their jumps, or when all the cheeseburgers are eaten, has Billy going full Rambo and shooting the now evolved gremlins as they try to get to the bottom of the screen. Difficulty level here changes the speed of the gremlins and gives them the ability to multiply when they touch water. Rudimentary, yes, but gets the job done for a 2600 license game. Next up was Gremlins The Adventure from 1985. Published by UK-based Adventure International, the game was released for BBC Micro, ZX Spectrum, Armistrad CPC, Commodore 64, and the Acorn Electron, which is very real and not something that I just made up. Again, following the story of the first film, the game stretches its legs by being a text-based adventure. Brian Howarth developed it and had already made a name for himself with the Mysterious Adventures games. The gameplay here is like Zork. You remember Zork, but with pictures and occasional animations. Some of the versions, though, are actually text-based only. You play as Billy and go through many of the settings of the film. The screen tells you what you see, and you can type in what you want to do. If you have seen the movie, then you will have an idea of what needs to be done in certain scenes. Chop a gremlin's head off, turn on the blender, etc. Time moves fast within the context of the game, and you will lose if you do not move fast enough. If you know what you're doing, however, the game can be completed in less than an hour. For 1985, this is pretty cool. Gremlins from 1986 would be released for the Apple II, Commodore 64, and Atari 5200. The game was again developed and released by Atari, and while it would be a step back in design from a text-based story mode of the previous entry, it looked leaps and bounds better than its 2600 counterpart. This game is a single screen affair, but as you can see, much, much nicer. You again take the reins as Billy, and you are tasked with killing gremlins and collecting mogwai. 
You have a set timer on each level and can complete it by either living through the night or catching and safely returning all the Mogwai. While it's not half as involved as the text adventure, it's a fun and addictive little top-down actioner. While some of the levels are stupidly easy, the later ones can become insane with the amount on the screen at the same time. The graphics and sound design are top-notch for the time, but good god will the music make your head explode. With another film and a new decade came a chance for developers to make games for new systems about a new property. The big one, the one most people including myself remember, is Gremlins 2 The New Batch for NES and Game Boy. This is the first time we take a hold of Gizmo, but that's kinda how the movies followed too. Billy got almost no help from the disembodied voice of Howie Mandel in the first movie, but in the new batch, both movie and game, Gizmo really comes into his own. Gremlins 2 was developed and published by Sunsoft, and they did a great job making different games with the different hardware capabilities in mind. The NES game follows Gizmo in the massive building of the film as he traverses the many floors, fighting off the evil gremlins. It's a top-down action platformer where you jump over gaps, avoid traps, and defeat gremlins on your way to a boss. Gizmo can use a few different weapons, like tomatoes, or the paperclip slash matchstick bow that the player can upgrade or buy things for Gizmo by finding hidden shops on each of the levels. You can buy hearts for lives, extra lives in general, or balloons to avoid damaging pits. Most of the enemies, and all the bosses, are modeled after some of the genetically modified gremlins of the film like the Electricity Gremlin and Spider Gremlin. It's a fairly brief game, and after some practice you can beat it in about 30 minutes, but it's a great example of how to do a licensed game right. The graphics, sound, and presentation are all top tier for the system, and the soundtrack has some absolute bangers in terms of 8-bit music. <laughs> The difficulty can ramp up at times, but it's manageable with some practice. The Game Boy iteration changed to a side-scrolling platformer and obviously had to make some concessions. The music is just one track that repeats, and it has limited sound effects, but it gets the job done for an original Game Boy game. The sprites look good and the enemies are varied throughout. You even get a couple different bosses with the Bat Gremlin and Plank Gremlin showing up before the final confrontation with the Spider Gremlin. There's even a mini-game between levels where Gizmo punches a speed bag to gain extra lives and, just like its big brother on the NES, there's a fun, gooey ending animation. While Sunsoft was creating hidden gems for Nintendo, Elite would churn out a very different Gremlins 2 for... <sighs> Amiga, Atari ST, Commodore 64, MSX, Amstrad CPC, and ZX Spectrum. It's pretty typical for PC games of the time, even looking like the first two Duke Nukem games, if you squint. It follows Billy in the massive building again, where he must traverse five floors with settings of the film and collect five separate important pieces to trigger the end of the game. Billy can get various weapons like frisbees, boomerangs, phones, and flashlights. Though honestly, the flashlight feels like a plasma rifle from Doom, so I don't know why you'd need anything else. Much like other PC games at the time, it's hard as nails. The enemies come at you at a constant pace and it's one-hit damage. You can collect various things besides weapons that trigger things like gizmo assists and bubbles which gives you currency to purchase weapons between levels. The music and sound effects are great, but the game doesn't really offer much in terms of replay value. Still a fun diversion for the PC crowd at the time, and certainly more involved than some of the other games on this list. There's also yet another version of Gremlins 2 made for DOS in 1991, and it was developed by High Tech Expressions, and if you remember our Nightmare on Elm Street video, it has that look and feel. The gameplay itself seems to mix mechanics from the Atari 5200 and the just mentioned batch of titles from the previous year. The game is okay looking and sounding, but it can get monotonous as you climb the game's 45 levels. Next, we move out of Gremlins 2 games and into things that I had never heard of territory. First, we have Gremlins Unleashed for the Game Boy Color. Coming out a whole 11 years after the most recent movie, this game was only released in Europe and it was developed by Wanadu. It goes back to being set in the first film's universe and is a platformer in every sense of the word. The interesting difference is that you can choose to play as Gizmo and defeat the Gremlins or be Stripe and collect all the things that can hurt Gremlins while also working a way to corrupt the other Mogwai. It's colorful, cheerful, and animated very well, but suffers in the gameplay department. Gizmo can defeat gremlins by flashing them with his camera while collecting sunglasses, and Stripe collects water bottles and destroys all the lights. It has bonus games throughout and gives you decent replayability from having what is essentially two campaigns, but like I said above, the gameplay suffers. Even with its various minigames, both campaigns feel samey, and the music gets very old very fast. It's an oddity for sure, as its length of release from any other Gremlins media is pretty far. I suppose as new generations were discovering the movies, they also wanted more things to go along with them. It's also an odd choice so close to the end of the Game Boy Color's life, but here we are. The next entry would stay handheld, but appear on the successor to the Game Boy Color. The next year would give us Gremlins, Stripe vs. Gizmo for the Game Boy Advance. 
It was developed for European audiences by the same Wanadu company as the previous title, and for the States by Magic Pockets. It appears as they just tried to remake their own game, as again you can either play as Gizmo or Stripe. Gizmo is tasked with retrieving all the stolen Christmas presents the Gremlins took, and Stripe is trying to stop Gizmo and force him to eat after midnight. The only advanced part here is the quality of sound and visuals, because the gameplay is just as stale as the previous one. As with most handheld experiences, the viewing window is a bit cramped, and a lot of your jumps are leaps of faith. To make matters worse, the camera has a serious case of ADHD and shoots around rapidly. I really wanted to like this game, as the Game Boy Advance has some real classics on it, but partly due to gremlin fatigue and partly due to expecting more with a newer system, this and the last game were just real letdowns. 2011 would give us a release on the Nintendo DS and Nintendo Wii titled Gremlins Gizmo. If you know what a Tamagotchi is, the real ones do, then slap that Gremlins license sticker on it and release it for two platforms. You can control or lead Gizmo around the house and feed him, dress him up, and play mini games with him. That's it. Playing it made me paraphrase Jurassic Park's Ian Malcolm and ask, are there any actual Gremlins in your Gremlin game? The answer is a solemn no. These are vapid, soulless cash-ins that do nothing for gameplay but I can see the appeal for a baby's first gremlins type of gaming experience. Finally, and to be clear, I didn't include any fan games or mobile ventures on here, we have the lovingly crafted LEGO Dimensions Gremlins set add-on for the base game. It was available for PS4, PS3, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and Wii U. LEGO Dimensions was a better version of Skylanders or Disney Infinity, and came with actual LEGO sets for each level pack released. It's actually the only way to get a legit LEGO set of anything gremlins related. Anyway, you spend your time between the hub world and the gremlin specific zones completing movie-related side quests or just running around causing gremlin LEGO-related mayhem. If you've played any of the LEGO video games, you know exactly what to expect. It's a really nice way to close out the journey through the games of gremlins. You know, for a property that only has two movies, and neither released in the past 30 years, gremlins has quite a few video games to explore. They also run the gamut of both quality and style of game. The Sun's Off rendition of Gremlins 2 for the NES is certainly the high point, but I would say all of them are at least worth checking out for any fan of the series. With a Gremlins TV series set to show up soon, there's always a chance we'll get another stab at a Gremlins video game. Gremlins Battle Royale? Gremlins First Person Shooter? Gremlins Real Time Strategy? You tell us! Let us know in the comments which of these games is your favorite, and which ones you had growing up. Is there another series of licensed games we should explore in this format? Let us know, and we'll see you on the next episode of Joe Blow Horror Videos Playing With Fear.